must wage what I have called total war against public enemy number one. I support a change in law to end federal criminal penalties for possession of up to one ounce of marijuana. That marijuana, pot, grass, whatever you want to call it, is probably the most dangerous drug. Some think there won't be room for them in jail. We'll make room. I experimented with marijuana a time or two, and I didn't like it and didn't inhale. And one major responsibility is to encourage people to use less drugs. Entirely legitimate topic uh, for debate. Radical rant. Welcome back, everyone. 46 after the hour. And today I got news of the first bills to be dropped in front of the Joint Committee <laughs> for Implementation of Measure 91. Of course, you know, Joint Committee means it's House and Senate. It doesn't mean they're rolling doobies. Although, you know, I'm not uh, I'm not against them doing so. The uh, Joint Committee is comprised of 10 members, six Democrats, four Republicans, and co-chaired by Senator Ginny Burdick. She's a Democrat out of Portland. And I forget who the other co-chair is, but you can look it up. I've posted in the uh, chat room the link to the Oregon legislative site that has all this information. We've got nine bills before us right now to alter or amend the medical marijuana program or the newly passed Measure 91. And a very simple way to understand what to support and what to reject. Reject the House bills, support the Senate bills. It's as simple as that. Everything I've seen so far coming out of the House is a stinker. And everything I've seen coming out of the Senate so far sounds pretty good. Let's take a look at these bills. House Bill 2033 is a bill to direct the State Board of Pharmacy to classify any synthetically manufactured cannabinoid as a controlled substance in Schedule 1. Now, the synthetic cannabinoids, you know, the JWH-018 and the 223s and all these JWHs, are the constituents that are sprayed on artificial herbs, you know, the, the, the fake pot the synthetic pot, the K2, the spice. And I believe this kind of bill is motivated by that scare, this fear of the synthetic marijuana, the, the fake pot that's out there that people use to get past drug tests and to use when marijuana is not legal. This bill is certainly not necessary as now that the real thing is legal, there is far less incentive to want to be using any of these artificial marijuanas, but also for the fact that this is a bill that is trying to address the problem of if you name a particular chemical in a schedule, all that they have to do is tweak a molecule here or there, make it a different chemical, and now it's not scheduled. And they're trying to get ahead of that by saying anything in the cannabinoid class, no matter how you tweak the molecule, is going to be Schedule 1. And the problem with that is that these synthetic cannabinoids were specifically designed for medical and scientific research. The whole point of them was to be able to study the effect of cannabinoids since marijuana was Schedule 1 and they couldn't get a hold of that. So making all the synthetics Schedule 1 just puts further roadblocks in front of the legitimate scientists and researchers who are studying the effect of cannabinoids on the human body. So we would reject this out of hand. There's no need. If you want to set something up like this, it would be more appropriate to automatically classify these things as Schedule 2. A Schedule 2 drug is still considered a dangerous drug of abuse that can't be had without prescription and has severe criminal penalties for its misuse. Think methamphetamine or cocaine. They're Schedule 2. Drop the synthetic cannabinoids in Schedule 2 and the researchers will still be able to do research with them. But you put them in Schedule 1 and they're hands off for everyone. The next couple of bills are the worst marijuana bills I have ever seen. Okay, that may not be true, but they're the worst I've seen this year. House Bill 2040 and 2041, uh, one would absolutely prohibit and the other one would allow cities to vote to prohibit medical marijuana facilities and licensed producers, processors, and sellers of marijuana from being located within one mile of a school. One mile halo around any school where there could not be any marijuana commerce. Now, I already produced a graphic on this where I showed a one mile radius from just one school, just one school in Portland, Oregon, Lincoln High School. You put a one mile barrier around that one school and there is no marijuana sales anywhere in the Portland downtown, Old Town, Pearl District, or South Waterfront. Basically everything in the skyscraper area of Portland, there'd be no pot sales. Now, I can't begin to count how many open alcohol venues there are within a mile of Lincoln High School. Not just places you can go in and buy a beer or have a drink, but patios where adults are drinking alcohol openly in front of the children. 
Now, it's bad enough that they want to put 1,000-foot restrictions on us, but a one-mile restriction is completely untenable and would, in a sense, essentially just ban marijuana in any city. Now, HB House Bill 2147 directs the Department of Revenue to, con to conduct a study on the taxation of marijuana. This is a good idea for 2008. <laughs> Look, we already decided how we're going to tax marijuana in Measure 91. 35 bucks an ounce at the grow. Let's let that run for a while. Let's see what happens when we tax marijuana at the lowest per weight tax in the nation or for that matter, the world. Let's see how that works out. If it's not adequately funding the uh, resources we expect it to fund, the schools and the, the, the drug treatments and so on, if it's not working, then you form a study committee to try to find a better solution. What this looks like to me is just a backdoor way for them to ignore the will of the people who voted for a $35 an ounce tax by putting the impetus of some study behind it that says, who knows, a sales tax or something would work. And the last House bill, HB 2676, directs the Oregon Liquor Control Commission to register medical marijuana facilities and patients and all that. Basically, it's a wholesale transfer and rewrite of the medical marijuana laws to turn it over to the Oregon Liquor Control Commission instead of the Oregon Health Authority. Now, look, you know my stance on this. I'd prefer we just integrate the whole thing. Let's have one system where marijuana is grown and processed and transported and sold and then you can have medical marijuana cards that give tax breaks or allow greater limits or whatever. But let's have one commercial system for marijuana. But if that's not the case, if they are going to remain one separate system for recreational and a separate system for medical, then by God, that medical system should remain under the Oregon Health Authority's auspices. Now we move from the bad to the good. SB 460, Senate Bill 460, is rules providing for relocation of registered medical marijuana facilities if a school is established within a thousand feet. Now, the, the, the scenario here that we're dealing with is you'd go and try to find a place to locate your dispensary. And you have to find a place that's not zoned residential. And you have to find a place that's a thousand feet away from schools and a thousand feet away from other dispensaries. You finally find your spot. You set up your shop. And then months later, a school moves in next door. You've got to shut down because you can't be within a thousand feet of a school. What this bill would do is provide a timetable so that if that is to occur, if a school does move in next to an existing facility, it has some time to be able to relocate and take its license to another location further away, farther away from that school. Now, personally, I would prefer that the schools have to do the same sort of location uh judgments as the dispensaries do that is a school should have to determine what's a thousand feet away from a dispensary and set up there the rules should work equally both ways but politically speaking people are going to be more sympathetic to schools than they are dispensaries so if the choice is shut it down or give us a timetable to relocate we'll take the latter next is bill senate bill 464 this would prohibit patients from processing extracts unless certified by the Oregon Health Authority. Uh, Measure 91 banned home production of concentrates using uh, solvents. And for the definition, solvent does not include glycerin or water or uh, carbon dioxide or uh, uh, alcohol, grain alcohol. We're talking about BHO and PHO, propane hash oil. And there currently exists kind of a loophole that that doesn't apply to medical marijuana patients. This bill would close that loophole. And I say that's a good thing because what is it about being sick that makes you any safer at home blasting BHO? If the people voted to ban home blasting, there shouldn't be an exception just because you're sick. Now, I would prefer this would be amended to provide some manner by which someone could register to be a home producer merely for personal or medical use, not for sale. There are ways of producing this stuff safely. You can buy closed loop systems that don't let gas escape. Or maybe you've got a property that's way the hell out in Eastern Oregon, far away from everyone, and you've got enough open air location to be able to blast safely. There ought to be a way to get that certified. But I'm thinking we are better safe than sorry in this circumstance. 
So let's go forth with this and work that pathway out sometime in the future. Then we have House Bills 479 and 480. These are a couple of bills. One of them is to uh, begin a study of medical marijuana and its patients to determine what's working for medical marijuana patients, what could they, what they prefer in their medical marijuana facilities and so forth. And another bill is to establish a permanent commission for the study of clinical uses of cannabis. Wow, folks, only 16 years later, and we're going to start asking medical marijuana patients how it's working for them. <laughs> well, you know, better late than never, I suppose, but come on, we, this should have been passed in 2000, not 2015, for God's sake. Finally going to ask the patients how it's working for them. All right, so that's the list of bills. If you want to find out more information about this, it's available. Uh, we put the link in the chat room, but you can also check the Portland Normal Facebook page, facebook.com slash Portland Normal. We've got that entire review up and available for you. And it does remind me that starting in February, uh, Toker Talk Radio won't be heard live uh, because in on, on Wednesdays, I should say, because Wednesdays is the day that this committee will be meeting in Salem and I'll have to take off early and drive down there to Salem. So starting in February, uh, Toker Talk Radio on Wednesdays will be a replay because I'll be busy getting my politics on. Also, if you check that link at the OLIS, you'll be able to find the list of the committee members, uh, the six Democrats and the four Republicans on that committee. Uh, their email addresses are also available. So if you're concerned about any of these bills, you'll be able to get, make your wishes known to those committee members. I'll also be you know, testifying for that committee and providing some educational materials for them as well. Those are the first nine bills that we've heard about. I'm sure there will be many more bills that will be produced uh, as we go through this next five-month process of crafting the marijuana regulations in the state of Oregon. Uh, many concerns still exist, including whether or not there should be any sort of merging of the two systems. Uh, there are other considerations with respect to medical marijuana and how it should be registered. I heard one uh, option that was being discussed as to whether or not... Uh, medical marijuana facilities and uh, pot shops, if they're open, if they're both going to be open, would the medical marijuana facilities open up to allow anyone to shop at them? And I just found that to be a silly suggestion. I mean, we're just more and more underscoring the fact that there's no difference between the, the marijuana that's being sold to these two different groups. It's already in stark relief as it is, with our dispensaries where many recreational consumers are shopping at them. Folks, a jar of AK-47 is the same jar of AK-47, whether or not you're buying it at the dispensary or you're buying it at the pot shop. Well, folks, that's all the time we've got for today, Hour 1. Stay tuned for Hour 2. Toker Talk Radio is coming up next, and our special guest in studio, we got Wiz Kaliko, who's just back from Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha to everyone out there. Very, very nice. Hi, to be back. Hi in Hawaii is in our chat room as well, so I'm sure I'll have some Hawaii-related questions for you. It's going to be fun. Stick around. All right, folks. For everyone here at 420radio.org, I'm Radical Russ. Thanks for joining us. And until next time, take care of each other, tokers. This is the Russ Belleville Show. The Russ Belleville Show is blogging and podcasting daily at RadicalRuss.com. <laughs>